Hello, welcome back to Freddy in the Shed. You join me in the garden on this part two video on this rather lovely retro all metal and brass steam engine. It was sent in to me by EngineDIY.com or EngineDIY.shop. If you've not seen the first video, I'd recommend that perhaps you give that a view first. On that, on the first video, we constructed this model, but it because it comes in a kit form and also if you've never heard of engine.diy.com or .shop I suggest you just pop over and check out their website because if you're into this sort of thing they have some absolutely wonderful steam models, petrol models, even jet engine models and I believe there's a sale on right now for the holidays I think it's up to 50% off on some of their most popular models and this is their latest one this little reversing double action steam engine and that's what we're, we're going to do on this video we are going to fire it up for the uh, the first time but there's a few things we need to go through before we get into that I just want to go through some of the preparation that you need before you run an engine like this firstly the water that you put into the boiler please 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 do not put tap water in your boiler because when it boils it will create lime scale all of this valve system in here and, and the engine itself will just clog up instantly with lime scale, so you need to use deionized water very very cheap to buy online and it comes down to the fuel, the accelerant for the burner now what is good about this model is that it uses stainless steel burner cores other than say a cord wick which produces soot and that's really what you want to try and avoid um, you don't want any soot or at least as little as possible soot coming up here and spoiling the lovely effect on the side of the boiler now you can use methylated spirits that will work also you may already have this you can use just simple rubbing alcohol but what you want to look for is the percentage of isopol in the alcohol the instructions say that you want to run at least at 95 percent personally from my own experience in running these I'd say go higher than that I would try and get the most strongest form of isopropyl that you can get and this is what I found on the internet this is very very cheap this was about seven pounds for a litre this is 19.99 percent so this is the purest isopropyl and that's really what you want because you want to avoid soot when it comes down to lubrication for the steam engine, the cylinder assembly here, this needs to be lubricated and for that you need genuine steam oil. This is a very very thick special oil, this will mix in with the, uh, the steam, it will be dragged into the cylinder and the spore valve system here, keep everything lubricated. Again you can buy this online. And then there's general lubrication for every moving part on the steam engine itself. Now on my Mammoth and Walesco engines, you can get away with just using 5W motor oil, 5W40 or 5W30, because they're just friction bearings. This is a higher quality. This uses roller bearings or ball bearings encased. So for that, you're going to need a much finer oil. And my favourite oil is this Singer super oil this is um, originally used for sewing machines also used by gunsmiths it's a very very fine oil but you need to go round and oil every moving part every bearing before you start the engine people say how long is the engine going to run for um, I haven't run this yet but generally I don't fly there generally you can look at about say 10 or 15 minutes of run time what is important though when you fill the boiler, which we're going to do in a moment, I generally go to about half full of water. If you go too high, what will happen is you'll start getting water go through the steam pipes into the cylinder. Now, in this model, because it is a high-quality model, you do have these little bleed valves here, these little bleed cocks, which allow most of the condensation to come out of the engine whilst it's warming up. But what you don't want is water going through there. That will cause a hydraulic lock and the engine won't work. Okay, hopefully that's uh, that's clear. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around in high speed and we're going to fill the engine up. Oh, one, one last thing. When you fill up with water, I haven't measured it, 
but I generally put 100 millilitres in, that's pretty much by the size of this boiler what it will take. One tip is, especially on a cold day like this, we're in uh, late December, heat your water first. So I'm going to put 100 millilitres of water, I'm going to put it into a microwave, boil it in the microwave, that will save a lot of start up time. Typically, a small boiler like this, if you use cold water, I, th I would say you're looking at maybe five minutes of burning to get this uh, to boil. If you use hot water, you probably cut that down to a minute, a minute and a half. It saves on the, on the alcohol. So that's what we're going to be doing. Stay with me. Let's get this engine moving. So I've put in about three quarters of water there in the boiler. Now one thing you've got to bear in mind is obviously this is all going to get very, very hot. And again, this is the 14 aged rating. The um, control valve there, the throttle if you like, it's very nice that they've made that in brass and also the whistle is pure brass. But this is going to get very hot to the touch but they do provide you with a pair of tweezers for helping with the construction and this is where these are going to come in really really handy for regulating the steam there and likewise of course the boiler is going to get very hot so I think that's it we've oiled it we've um, got preheated water in the boiler we've got the exhaust running into a the little uh, plastic box that came with the parts for the model and I think it's now time to light the burners and then wait for it to build up steam. Can't wait. So once we start getting a little bit of steam from the boiler, we need to bleed the piston head assembly with these little stopcocks here. At the moment they're open, and that will let out any condensation and water so we don't get a hydraulic lock. Good little feature that, just what you'll find on a normal steam engine. Again, it just shows you the quality and the thought that went into this model. A bit, <laughs> got to be a bit careful here with your fingers because obviously this is uh, quite hot. So we can see the rather nasty condensation there coming out with the steam oil mixed into it. Try and clear as much as we can out. So we're under steam now, so I think we'll give it a go for the first time. We'll have it in forward, forward gear first, and uh, yeah, let's let some let some steam out. Let's see if she wants to go. And there she goes.
a little bit more steam out of the boiler. Whoa! Slow it down a little bit. Wow! Isn't that lovely? It's running really, really nice. I don't like to run them too fast myself. Let's try the Stevenson's link now. We should be able to stop the engine. There we go. Put it into the reverse and then on the fly. There we go, it runs in reverse. Isn't that amazing? This will also act as a throttle as well. You can slow the engine down. a complete stop so run it forward again I think next thing will be to uh, try the little generator there it's really building up steam now so I think we need to stop the engine lock it in a neutral and then we'll connect the drive belt and see if we can get the little lamp to work right, we're running in, we'll try, I don't know which way it'll run actually we'll try it in the forward motion first we'll switch it on wow up really bright actually. Thought it might flicker but it's not. So I'm gonna say really impressed how smooth this runs and I said on the first video the test of an engine is how slow you can get it to run before it stalls. Mammoth and Walesco, you struggle a little bit, but we're going to turn this one right down. That is lovely. It smells nice as well. You can smell the steam oil coming off now from the exhaust. It's absolutely wonderful. Look at that, look how slow that's running and that's also powering the generator. Unbelievable, that's, that is a sign of quality that is.
I'm going to bring this video to a close now. I'd like to thank EngineDIY.com for sending me in this superb model. I've had so much fun in building it and playing with it this afternoon. If you're interested in this model or any other models that they sell, please check out their website. There will be a link in the description below. It's worth going back periodically because in the holiday seasons they have sales. Sometimes some of the models are up to 50% off and that is quite a substantial saving. As always, I'd like to thank you for your view time. I don't get that many views per video, so I do appreciate each and every one of you. And finally, a rather dirty, which is what happens when you play with steam engines, a rather dirty thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. If you get a second before you go, just hit me a thumbs up down below. I do like to see that. I'd like to thank you in advance. So please, please, please look after each other for me. Stay safe, guys. And of course, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.